Most of us have known or at least heard how some of the richest people in the world pay less or no taxes at all. Out that Amazon is paying zero if federal income taxes. The founder of Tesla paid nothing in 2018. I know people that are making a tremendous amount of money and paying virtually no tax. I pay no taxes. That's why Trump pays no taxes. And it was all legal. But should it be? What is interesting is that the government only used to tax rich people. So let's go over how rich people are able to pay less taxes by learning the main ideas from the book Tax-Free Wealth by Tom Wheelwright. Lesson number one, how the poor started paying taxes. After World War II, the government realized that taxes were a great tool to raise funds to rebuild a society. So instead of just taxing the rich, the government started taxing the middle class. Although people were only taxed on the extra income they had after the average living expenses. Soon after, the government realized people's behaviors changed based on their taxes. So they began to tinker with the tax laws to direct how people spent their money. They realized that if the government gave a tax break to those who invested in businesses, more people would invest in businesses. If the government gave tax breaks to those investing in housing, more people would invest in housing. So the government began crafting a tax system that would encourage people to invest in things that would stimulate the economy and create infrastructure. Eventually, the tax laws went from a simple emergency revenue-raising vehicle to a large set of laws that dictate the economic behavior of an entire society. So instead of fighting the government, rich people decided to save in taxes by literally following the rules. Lesson number two, the four types of income. By understanding that the government gives tax breaks to those who help stimulate the economy or help build infrastructure, many people realized that the way they earned and used their money had a big impact on how they were taxed. In the book, Tom uses Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant to show how each type of income is taxed. First, we have the employee income. Anyone who has a job has this type of income. This is considered earned income, and it has the highest form of taxes. The taxes here are organized in brackets, depending on how much a person earns. It can go from 10% for low-income earners up to 37% for those making over $539,000. The U.S. has what is called marginal tax, meaning all of your income is not subject to the tax bracket percentage, but instead you only pay the tax for the money that falls within the tax bracket. You can see it illustrated here. Now these tax brackets are for federal taxes only. You still have to pay things like Medicare taxes, Social Security taxes, and state taxes. This means that the more money you make in this category, the more expensive taxes become. This is one of the reasons why building wealth in this quadrant is very difficult. There are a few ways that employees can temporarily reduce their tax bill. Many employees can direct money to tax advantage accounts, like a 401k or a traditional IRA. This method doesn't really eliminate the tax, but instead it postpones the tax to a later date. Once a person retires and they start using this money, they will have to pay the taxes. The benefit is that if a person is in a high tax bracket, they are able to take this money that would be heavily taxed and postpone the tax to a later date where they live in a lower tax bracket, essentially lowering the tax liability for that money. The self-employed quadrant consists of those who are just getting started in business the solopreneurs. Here, they still pay earned income tax, which again is the highest form of tax. But a small benefit that this category has is that the self-employed can deduct a few expenses related to the business before paying taxes. The drawback of this quadrant is that the self-employed has to pay more for Medicare and Social Security taxes. Normally, this tax is split between employer and employee. But since the self-employed acts as both the employer and the employee, they get to pay both sides of this tax liability. In the business quadrant, business owners are able to create separate entities for their ventures. This allows them to operate with a different set of rules than the previous two. In this category, corporations have a flat tax rate of 21%, regardless of how much money they make. Here, businesses are allowed to make money, spend as much as they can as long as it's justifiable for business, and then pay tax with the remainder of the money. This allows business owners to grow their wealth and expand their net worth by reinvesting in the growth of their business before taxes become an issue. In this category, business owners still have to pay taxes if they want to make a profit. Things get a lot better once they move into the next category. 
The investor quadrant is where wealth can be expanded and taxes can reach zero, if they are planned correctly. Becoming an investor means that a person becomes an owner of an asset by either buying the asset, working to build it, or using someone else's money to own an asset or part of an asset. The reason why an investor can lower their taxes to virtually zero while continuing to grow their wealth is because an asset can continue to grow in value, but it cannot be taxed unless it's sold. So wealth can continue to grow without triggering any taxes. And if the investor needs money, they can borrow money against their assets to get access to liquidity without triggering any tax. What about cash flow, you might ask? For many assets, cash flow can be considered passive income. In many cases, this is taxed at 20% or less with some exceptions. But this tax can also be lowered or even eliminated by using things like depreciation, which we'll talk about in a second. Since the B and I quadrant host entities that are separate from their owners, wealthy people find creative ways to avoid taxes, like Lesson number 3. The Tax Strategies of the Rich as we explained before, companies are able to spend money on their business before taxes are even calculated. And Tom says that with a little bit of planning, anything can be a deduction. For example, let's say that a business owner likes to take a trip to Vegas every year. He could spend his own money after taxes, or he could schedule business meetings, seminars, or networking events to attend to for more than 51% of his time there. This qualifies his trip as a business trip, since he's spending money that directly impacts the growth of his business. Businesses are also able to enjoy a variety of tax credits that the government has in place to encourage certain business activities. The company Tesla, for example, has received many tax credits for research and development. The company focuses on developing electric-powered vehicles and creating the infrastructure to power them. This is considered an innovation to advance clean energy and transportation which the government likes. But one of the most shocking is Donald Trump. Trump was able to completely eliminate taxes for one of his golf courses because he buried his wife there. In New Jersey, where his golf course is located, cemetery land is exempt from property taxes, income taxes, and sales taxes. So by burying his ex-wife there, he was able to classify his golf course as cemetery land and completely eliminated three types of tax. But business owners can also get creative with the fact that a business is a separate entity. If the business owner taxes his business as an S-corporation, also called a pass-through entity, he can skip the corporate tax and pay all profits on his personal income tax. The only problem is that he would have to pay income tax on a high income. And remember, this is the highest form of tax, so his income will be heavily taxed. So he decides to give his parents a share of his company, which makes them co-owners of his business. Since this business is a pass-through entity, no tax is taken at the corporate level, and all the profits pass through to their owners. This reduces the main owner's income to a more comfortable tax bracket. And since his parents also have a lower tax bracket, all the extra money that would have been heavily taxed is now taxed at a lower tax rate. Eventually, the parents can create a trust and invest this money, and eventually use the step-up basis to inherit this trust back to their son, allowing them to pay a much lower tax rate. Investors can use all of these business strategies and more. One of the most popular strategies is depreciation. Tom Rewrites refers to appreciation as magic, because it's a deduction in your taxes that doesn't cost you any money. For example, let's say that Tom buys a rental property for $300,000 and he has a positive cash flow of $9,000 per year after expenses. This positive cash flow would be added to his earned income, which is around $85,000 a year. This new cash flow would take him from the 22% tax bracket into the 24% tax bracket. But he is able to use depreciation, which gives him a tax credit on the normal wear and tear of the building. So out of the $300,000 he paid for the property, $50,000 was for the land and $250,000 was for the building. He can depreciate the value of the building over the next 27 and a half years, or 3.6% yearly. This means that Tom can depreciate $9,090 per year. This tax credit deducts $9,090 from his income, essentially making his $9,000 positive cash flow absolutely tax-free and adding an additional $90 tax credit to his ordinary income, all while having his property being paid off by a tenant and owning an asset that appreciates in value. 
all of which increases his wealth tax-free. Lesson number four, the financial team of the rich. If you pay attention, every wealthy business owner and investor has a team that allows them to take advantage of all the tax laws available to them. This includes tax advisors, bookkeepers, bankers, attorneys, and investment advisors. This team allows them to take advantage of all the benefits that are legally allowed to them and protect them from the dangers of the financial world. Something that we didn't talk about in this video was the mentalities and how money is earned in each of these categories. So check out this video to get a full breakdown of the cash flow quadrant where we go over in detail how each of these quadrants work and how to get into them.